Hi doctors, Dr. Naveen here. This video contains information about topic known as folate trap. What are the other names for this topic? Folate trap is also called as methyl folate trap or the third name is THF starvation. What is this? Tetrahydrofolate starvation. To understand this, you need to understand three important things. One is, what are the different forms of vitamin B12 which are available in the body? And next thing is, what are the different forms of folic acid available in the body? And third important thing is, how methionine undergoes its metabolism, that is methionine conversion to homocysteine. So to begin with, First and foremost, there are three forms of vitamin B12. One is adoform. Adoform is otherwise known as 2-deoxyadenosyl form. Second one is methyl form. Methyl form is also known as methyl cobalamin. Third, not much important, but hydroxy form, it gets converted to either methyl form or adoform when there is exposure to the sunlight. So whenever there is exposure to the sunlight, the hydroxy least important form, it gets converted into methylcobalamin or adenocobalamin. The different forms of folic acid are tetrahydrofolate, second is 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate, number 3 is dihydrofolate, fourth is 10-formyl tetrahydrofolate and fifth is 5,10 methylene tetrahydrofolate. So now after understanding these two forms, one is forms of vitamin B12 and the forms of folic acid, you need to remember only these things from now on. For our topic of discussion, that is folate trap, only two are important. One is methyl form and the other is tetrahydrofolate and 5-methyl tetrahydrofolate. So Try to remember these two important things and let us quickly jump back to the third part. The methionine which is present in the body, it is an essential amino acid. Essential amino acid means you have to consume it through the diet. In the body, methionine undergoes metabolism to form, what is that? Homocysteine. So methionine is converted into homocysteine. What are the different steps involved in formation of homocysteine? Methionine first is converted into S-adenosyl methionine and this S-adenosyl methionine with the help of methyl transferase is converted into S-adenosyl homocysteine and later this S-adenosyl homocysteine gets converted into the final compound called homocysteine. And what is the fate of this homocysteine? This homocysteine in the body based on whether there is deficiency of methionine in the body or if there is requirement of cysteine which is another amino acid which is non-essential. Based on the requirement it is either converted into methionine back or it is converted to cysteine. So for us important thing is how come homocysteine is converted back to methionine? So what are the reactions involved in this? So conversion of homocysteine to methionine involves the following reaction. The enzyme called methionine synthase because it is involving in synthesis the, with the help of methionine synthase, methionine uh, homocysteine is getting converted to methionine. For this methionine synthase, in the initial part of discussion I told you, from the cobalamin part only remember methyl cobalamin. I'll call it as methyl B12. Methyl B12 acts as a coenzyme for methionine synthase. It acts as a coenzyme for methionine synthase. During the formation of methionine, B12 gives away its methyl so that homocysteine takes it and it forms methionine and now methyl cobalamin will just become cobalamin. But to continue the supply of methyl cobalamin so that this reaction occurs, 
this b12 is again converted back to methyl this b12 is again converted back to methyl with the help of 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate and this 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate after donating methyl it gets converted into tetrahydrofolate please remember this reaction very very important here for conversion of homocysteine to methionine we need both vitamin b12 and also folic acid now in the next part of the discussion i would like to add an important point here when i say folic acid let us say um like folic acid is taken through the diet so in the diet folic acid whatever folates dietary folates which are taken in the diet they are converted to 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate so what is the dietary form of folic acid which is absorbed into the body and which is entering into the plasma through the small intestinal mucosa it is actually 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate but the problem with 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate is after entering inside the cell this 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate should be converted into tetrahydrofolate so that the folates they act like coenzymes for different reactions logic is simple for the folates to function they should be converted to tetrahydrofolate why so this is the question if you can answer this question the concept of folate trap becomes easy for you let me add one interesting concept here the folates which are inside the cells for them to remain inside the cell they should be polyglutamated what is that they should be polyglutamated so this is monoglutamate form of folic acid and we have a cell here this monoglutamate form can easily escape out of the cell why do we need folic acid folic acid is important for purine and pyrimidine synthesis so that we have dna and rna so the site of action of folic enzymes are always inside the cell but if this folic acid is in monoglutamate form it comes out it cannot stay or retain inside the cell for this folic acid to retain inside the cell we need it to be polyglutamated what is that we need it to be polyglutamated so that it cannot come out of the cell so it can stay inside the cell so for this polyglutamation to occur we need an enzyme known as polyglutamate synthase what is that we need an enzyme known as polyglutamate synthase and this polyglutamate synthase can only act on tetrahydrofolate it can never act on 5 methyl tetrahydrofolic acid so it only acts on tetrahydrofolate so after polyglutamation this tetrahydrofolate is converted into the active forms of coenzymes like 5 comma 10 methylene tetrahydrofolate dihydrofolate and it takes parts in amino acid conversions purine synthesis pyrimidine synthesis everything for all these actions to occur it is important that 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate should be converted into tetrahydrofolate so that this gets polyglutamated this gets polyglutamated and later on there are functional coenzymes available now the logic is simple 5 methyl tetrahydrofolate should be converted to tetrahydrofolate so that the folic acid acts in the body and what is most important for this conversion we need vitamin b12 deficiency my final conclusion is concentrate here in vitamin b12 deficiency there is relative folic acid deficiency why though high levels of serum folate are there but still there is low levels of cellular folate so vitamin b12 deficiency leads to relative folic acid deficiency because because folate is getting trapped inside the serum folate is not available so that it can help in dna rna synthesis so this concept is folate trap